AMD's RX 5700 XT is fast becoming our favorite card this year. And with manufacturers going crazy creating their own custom cards based on the new architecture, we're getting truly powerful examples of what Navi can do. One such card is the ASUS ROG Strix Radeon 5700 XT OC. This particular card is an overclocker's dream with plenty of overclocking headroom thanks to its excellent thermals and triple fan cooler. Now the ASUS ROG Strix 5700 XT OC comes with a massive max contact cooler decked out with triple axial fans and a huge double heat sink. The card is very enthusiast focused so there's plenty of extra features here that you won't find on a reference model. The card itself is pretty large and is considerably larger than a reference 5700 XT and will take up three slots in your motherboard. And since Asus used a custom designed PCB that utilizes a 14 phase VRM for maximum durability, the card now requires an 8 pin PCIe power connector instead of a 6 that is on the reference model. There's three slots on the back for DisplayPort 1.4A and a single HDMI 2.0B port. The card has RGB lights scattered on its chassis and you can customize lighting via Asus Aura Sync technology. There's also a button on the card that you can press to turn off the lights if you don't like RGB and right beside that is the switch for the BIOS that allows you to shift between performance and quiet mode. Since the card is an OC model, it's slightly overclocked from the factory, with a higher core clock of 1770 MHz and a higher boost clock of about 1905 MHz. The card also has PCIe 4.0 support, uh, feature proofing it for later builds, as well as 8 gig of new GDDR6 memory. Now moving on to the benchmarks, we're benchmarking this particular CPU on a PC with a 9th gen Intel Core i5-2400F processor paired with an Asus ROG Maximus 10 formula motherboard, 32 gig of 3200 MHz DDR4 Vulkan Z memory, uh, 500 gig Western Digital Black NVMe SSD storage, and a 256 gig T-Force Delta Max RGB secondary SSD. The first game that we're using to benchmark this new card is Rockstar's newest Western Epic, Red Dead Redemption 2. Now, take note that we were having issues benchmarking with a card with a built-in benchmark in the game, so we did use a mission in the Saint Denis area as a basis of a benchmark run, so it'll be representative of what you'll see in the game. In Red Dead Redemption 2, the RG Strix Radeon RX 5700 XT OC has a substantial lead over NVIDIA's RTX 2070 uh, Founders Edition in both max FPS and average FPS. The Strix RX 5700 XT OC's factory overclock also shows in this particular test as it has a slight lead over the reference 5700 XT from AMD. The newly released Outer Worlds is next since the game doesn't have an in-game benchmark. We ran a set route from your ship at the beginning of the game to the ruins set on the outskirts of the city taking care to take the same path every single time. Here the Strix RX 5700 XT OC uh, seeds the lead to Nvidia's RTX 2070 but not by much though the RTX 2070 does have a higher maximum FPS compared to the card from Asus. Shadow of the Tomb Raider is next and it has long been established as a benchmark standard for many many outfits and here we see the Strix RX 5700 XT OC beating the RTX 2070 handily in all metrics. Warhammer Total War 2 is a long time benchmark standard and here both the Strix RX 5700 XT OC and Nvidia's RTX 2070 FE are neck to neck with Nvidia's card ahead in average FPS by just one frame. Our final game is Far Cry 5, an older game for sure, but still pretty demanding as far as resources go. Here we see the RTX 2070 lag a bit in average FPS, but is capable of drawing more max frames compared to the Strix RX 5700 XT OC. Moving on to thermals, thanks to the new cooling solution and triple fans, the Strix RX 5700 XT OC is capable of staying cooler compared to the reference card, which uses a simple blower type setup. The card managed to stay relatively cool at just 70 degrees Celsius in full load in a room that's around 30 degrees Celsius, which is quite a stark difference compared to the reference designs of the 5700 XT, the 2060 FE, and the 27 FE. Noticeably, the reference design of the 5700 XT uh, 
got really hot reaching a maximum of around 93 degrees Celsius at the very end of our benchmark. Now AMD's new RX 5700X3 cards are truly competitive with Nvidia's offerings. One only has to see the company's mid-year super refresh to see that. Now if you're looking to buy this particular version of AMD's cards, you'll be paying quite a bit for it. The Strix RX 5700XT OC has a MSRP of around 30,890 pesos, quite higher than Nvidia's RTX 2070 models, and almost the same price as the RTX 2070 Super cards in the local market being offered by the competitors of Asus. But then again, the top tier components, factory OC, plus the fact that it runs quite cool, make it a great base for anyone looking to upgrade to a new setup this year.